But uh, let's talk about the stock on our radar, Equita Small Finance Bank. Their third quarter update has reflected a strong sequential growth in advances, while deposits too have grown strongly. However, in other news, the RBI has also given its approval for SPIMF to pick up 9.99% stake in the merged entity. To discuss this and more, we now have Mr. P. N. Vasudevan, who is the MD and CEO of the company. Thanks a lot, Mr. Vasudevan, for joining in once again. The last time we spoke, it was uh, with regards to your decision of coming back to the company. You had said that, you know, the second half of this year, growth will continue at 25%. And that seems to be the case in uh, the first uh, half of the second half of this year, which is the third quarter. What do you think the fourth quarter is likely to be? Do you believe that 25% is the run rate or maybe you can scale it back to the 30% from which you scaled it down to 25% earlier? Good morning. Uh, happy New Year to all of you. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, pre-corona, Equitas, we have generally been having a growth rate of around 30%. Uh, so we always expect that on a sustainable basis, we should be aiming around that 30% level. This is largely on two factors. One is that our size of the advances actually is very, very small. We are a very small bank compared to everybody else in the market. And so a percentage of 30% on that base is not something which is uh, very dramatic. Second thing is the segment that we lend to, uh, there's a lot of unmet demand because that's traditionally not been the banking sector's focus. And so there's a lot of, uh, you know, pent up uh, de unmet demand in that segment. So a combination of this, we believe, uh, is something where uh, Equitas should be able to look at around the 30% level, give or take a few basis points here and there on a sustainable basis. So we had predicted a 30% uh, uh, you know, growth for the current year also, coming off from the corona years. Um, the first two quarters uh, was a little low because some little bit of execution in the non-Tamil Nadu states was uh, you know, taking a little longer time. So we pared it down to 25, but uh, in December we did achieve a 27% growth. And for the full year, we should be in the range of around uh, 25 to 30. So give or take a few basis points, it should be around that. Okay, all right, Mr. Vasudevan. So good to see the sectors that you're lending to, they're showing traction. And as well as on a low base, you expect to grow by 25 to 30%. Let's get a couple of aspects and out of the way. The credit deposit ratio, that's moved to around 106% odd. Don't you think it's time now to start focusing more on the liability size? Uh, where do you see this basically stabilizing? The CD ratio, that's point number one. And also your CASA, that's come down to around 46% odd. Uh, it's come down on a sequences as well as on a year-on-year -year basis. Outlook on that, where is that number likely to stabilize? Yeah, so the credit deposit ratio, see, uh, we do get options from time to time of taking the refinance uh, from some of the uh, financial institutions and they come at a fairly attractive interest rate given the fact that you know we are either in affordable housing segment or we are in the very small business uh, loan lending segment so there's a lot of support that we get from the financial institutions by way of refinance at rates which are fairly attractive and so we do a combination of uh, deposit as well as uh, refinance from some of those institutions and that is why the CD ratio is uh, around that 100 percent level uh, going forward, uh, you know, we should expect uh, that to be around that 95 to 100% level uh, because we would continue to get, uh, get, I mean, continue to aim at getting the benefit of uh, lower refinance rates uh, given the kind of assets that we are actually building on the book, on the books. By, by, so, by when does this come down, sir, to this 95 to 100% before you tackle the CASA part of it? Um, see, uh, it also depends uh, what will be the, you know, refinance uh, norms of this uh, lending institution. See, so long as they continue to give us attractive rates for the kind of borrower that we are lending to, uh, I don't see that actually coming down too fast because we would like to get the benefit of lower refinance rates. Um, so I don't want to put a time frame, but uh, definitely uh, we will continue to mobilize deposits fairly well. And our deposit has been growing very strongly. So that's never an issue for us. Mm. We are only using the refinance from a cost or cost perspective. Right. You know, you spoke about the cost perspective itself. I'm looking at uh, your third quarter cost of funds. They've actually increased 16 basis points uh, to 6.41%. Uh, um, what happens to your NIMS, your spreads going forward? Can you give us a sense? And while you're at it, also about credit cost. I mean, this 75 crore per quarter sort of run rate maintains or... Do you see that uh, improving or maybe exacerbating? Okay. So, um, on the names part of it, cost of funds, uh, yes, there was a 16 bips rise uh, in the third quarter. 
uh, actually we should look at uh, some more increase in the cost of funds in the fourth quarter uh, and probably the first quarter of next financial year because the old deposits at lower rates are getting replaced by new deposits at a higher rate so that that takes some time to get played out and that's starting to play out now uh, parallelly uh, you know uh, 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 you know the bank has also been looking at our both operating uh, leverages as well as some level of uh, in, you know lending rate increase to the borrowers so on a combination basis we have been able to maintain uh, the spreads not necessarily the nim nim is a reflection also of the change in mix of our lending from low ticket to medium ticket size loan so that's a little bit of a uh, Uh, you know reduction in rates that we do when the ticket size goes up uh, so nim is not necessarily the principal thing to look at from an equitas perspective it should be more our net spreads and net spreads we are confident that we should be able to maintain uh, by a combination of uh, better uh, operating leverage as well as partly passing on the interest cost for the borrowers so that's on the uh, on the spread part of it as far as the credit cost part of it is concerned Uh, you know, pre-corona, our traditional annual credit cost used to be around the 1.1-1.2 percent uh, uh, level. Uh, during corona, of course, it had gone substan- substantially higher. Uh, this year, being the first year post-corona, we had uh, guided for a one and a half percent credit cost, which we should uh, uh, aim, which 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 we are uh, you know quite in line with that, and we should ensure that this year we do land at around that one and a half percent level. Um, and going forward into the future uh, next few years uh, we should really expect our credit cost to go back to our pre corona levels yeah what about mr vasudevan uh, you know we have that merger that's in the works and you have indicated everything is on track as well give us a timeline by when should this get done so we had um, kind of expected that before the financial year that's for march we should mm. be able to complete the merger is what we had been guiding all along yes. and i think we are fairly on track because we had the final nclt hearing on 21st of december last year and all the approvals uh, are in place so we are awaiting the final orders from nclt so it is possible that uh, you know keeping our fingers crossed we might even get it sometime during this month okay all right, all right. mr vasudevan also you, you told us that spreads are more important than nims from a you know from your perspective give us a number out there what's what's the broad range we should work with see ultimately we are we have to look at our roes <laughs> and uh, you know finally the roa reflects everything you know whether it's operating cost credit cost or interest cost everything gets reflected in roa and um, you know our roa ideally we would always love to aim at around the 2% level and uh, second quarter we were at 1.6% uh, roa first quarter was 1.4 second quarter was 1.6 and the third quarter as our credit cost comes down and fourth quarter as our credit cost continues to come down uh, we should aim to get close to our target of 2% roa all right and finally before we let you go uh, you know uh, a lot of uh, approvals coming funds ways to uh, ca- increase their holdings or rather hold up to 9.99% stake in the merged entity that of course it was a regulatory requirement as well but uh, now that the ceiling for all of them have increased have you heard from them them looking to increase their stake in the merged entity there is continuity at the top as well with you coming back uh, ha- any fundraising plans on the cards so there is no b- primary fundraiser uh, plan for the bank because we are fairly well capitalized around uh, 23 24% uh, capital equity level so the primary capital raise uh, plan at the bank today uh in terms of the uh, invest some of the investors seeking rbi approval yes uh, that's uh, that's nice for us to know that some of our old um, you know uh, investors who have been backing equitas group for uh, quite some time now uh, are continuing to exhibit strong confidence uh, in terms of uh, backing up uh, the most entity going forward so we hope that we will continue to be able to deliver you know uh, value to all our stakeholders that you know we should be able to retain the trust that they have been exhibiting on the bank okay all right uh, well it's good speaking to you, mr vasudevan so you're looking at continuing to grow at around 25 to 30 percent the cd ratio over a span of time will come down to a 90 to 100 95 to 100 percent but that could not be in a jiffy and also the roa target is headed towards that two percent odd mark it's been good speaking to you thanks so much for joining in thank, thank well, you that note though let's uh, turn our attention my colleague uh,